forth going ahead and getting started. Um, I am not familiar with whether this, uh, the, the meeting needs um, all of the Roberts Rules of Order pieces that a school board meeting would have, and I'm assuming it doesn't, but um, if it's supposed to, and I'm not doing that, this is all Jim's fault, just so we, we all know. <laughs> Um, but so I think we can consider the meeting called to order and uh, the first item on the agenda is public comment. And obviously, once we're done with this piece, uh, Sue and Keisha are going to take over and rock us from there. So are there any members of the public who would like to speak at this time? Hearing none, I will go ahead and pass it over to Sue and Keisha. Thanks so much, Mara. That was probably a lot easier than you thought it would be. <laughs> um, and so I think that still means, though, given the number of people in here and some unfamiliar names and faces, that there are still people who are here from the public. So we just want to make sure you know that there will be a segment where we go into smaller breakout groups and ask people to share stories. And we invite you to participate in that as well. I think it's a little bit less jarring if the public is there to not be kind of flies on the wall for something pretty intimate and to feel welcome to share your own story about why this topic matters to you. So we just want to make that clear now um, and appreciate your, your engagement in this topic. Um, you know, Sue and I do this work across Vermont, um, particularly. We have done this work outside of Vermont as well. Um, but certainly we have seen an increase in uh, soul searching and, um, you know, people engaging and wanting to understand these topics better um, in the wake of George Floyd's murder. And just as we acknowledge that thousands more Black and Brown Americans have lost their lives in the pandemic. Um, than in, in a disproportionate way to white Americans. Um, and that, you know, that these confounding elements of what's happening in society along with other things going on in politics and recent elections um, certainly have us all on edge emotionally um, and in terms of trying to hopefully better understand one another in our communities and in our state. Um, so we really value the committee staying engaged with us and, you know, being part of this work. Um, we value people from the public working with us as well. And we value the community and the kind of uh, city leadership and school leadership for making this conversation possible. Um, so I just wanted to start there. Uh, we really wanted to make this first meeting about building trust and getting to know one another and sort of forming guiding principles and norms rather than kind of jumping right into the um, charge of the committee, which is significant. <laughs> but, you know, <clears throat> I think that could really um, get people in a kind of different space than they need to be to hear one another on such an important topic as, you know, the safety of our young people and how we, um, how we keep our community safe and how we keep a, a common trust with one another. Um, so with that said, uh, I just wanted to um, pass it over to Sue to have people introduce themselves. And if, sorry, while Sue's getting ready, um, if you are coming in after I made this announcement, we suggest and sort of hope that you will put in your name, um, your name that you want to be called, like your first name that and how it might be pronounced or if it's a nickname and your preferred pronouns. Um, and, and Sue might have some of that repeated, but it would be good to help remind people. Thank you, Keisha. Welcome everybody. We're so happy to be with you. And um, we, as Keisha said, uh, she and I have been doing similar work around the state and doing some of this work in New England as well. I just wanna reiterate, it's a, a really trying time for a lot of us and we are hoping that tonight we can kind of pause and take a deep breath 
and really set the stage for this group that's about to embark on some very important work together. And so we are going to talk a little bit in a few minutes about how we're going to approach this. But the very first thing we want to do are some, some introductions. So what we'd like to do is invite each of you, and I'll just go around and call on people just to make it a little easier. We'd like to invite you to share your name, what you'd like to be called. Uh, your connection either with the school or with Mo the Montpelier area. We want to ask you to share one thing people might not know about you. And then the third thing is we want you to just briefly, if you can, say why it matters to you to be part of this committee that's just forming. So your name, your connection with the school or the community, something people might not know about you, and then a brief description of why it matters to you to be part of this work. So I'm just gonna go across the screen and Mara, I'm going to begin with you. Awesome, thank you. Um, so my name is Mara Iverson. I use she, she, her pronouns. I work for Outright Vermont in my professional job. So one of my most uh, fervent passions is advocating for LGBTQ plus young people. I am on the school board. A thing that not everyone uh, might know about me is that Halloween is my favorite holiday. And so we're just coming off of 31 days of the best time of my life, except for it was weird because COVID. So it was weird good days. Um, and I think that there was one more, oh, why we want to be involved in this work. I'm really excited and interested to be having a conversation about what justice in school looks like for youth because um, holding youth when mistakes are made and holding ourselves in space when something isn't um, going as well as we want or situations don't feel good, those are the times I think that we, we most need um, to really consciously choose how we're going to be together. And I'm excited to have that conversation. Thank you so much. And Edie? And please, if I pronounce your name incorrectly, please say it so we, we have the right pronunciation. Um, hi, I'm Edie. I use she, her, he, him, and they, them pronouns. I'm a genderqueer and aspec student at Montpelier High School. I'm a junior. Um, something else about me, this feels like a very uninteresting thing to say, but I love my dog. I really love him. And I just wanted to put that out there about myself. Um, and it's important to me to do this because even as an LGBT student, I do my best to recognize my own privilege and I want to give to my community knowing that. Great, thank you so much, Edie. And Will. Hello, I'm Will Alexander, he, him. I'm the faculty chair of the Writing for Children and Young Adults program at Vermont College. So that's what I do here in town. Um, and that's also indirectly my uh, connection to this. I, um, I serve on the diversity, equity, and inclusion committee at the college. Um, and I'm, most of my job is talking to a whole lot of YA writers. And so the, the, the business of creating things adults creating things for teenagers and presuming that we know what teenagers need um, and not always being correct about that presumption. Um, and many of, the, many of the debates that we've been engaging with as a nation, as a community um, have been focused and intensely present in the field of YA literature for a while and so I'm, yeah, I work with We Need Diverse Books sometimes. I'm used to that. I'm used to this conversation and I'm thrilled by the opportunity to um, have that conversation in a, in a way that really directly matters. So thank, thank you so you. much. And Susan? Hi. 
Hi, um, my name is Susan Koch, and I am a teacher in the Montpelier Roxbury School District. I've been teaching first grade and kindergarten in Montpelier for 12 years now, and I'm a, I've been teaching um, in different Vermont schools. And I also live here in Montpelier. Um, I'm comfortable with the she, her pronouns, and I have children that have gone through the Montpelier Roxbury School District. So I have wearing a couple hats here. Um, it's really important to me to, to do this work because I think it's really important for kids to feel safe. Otherwise they can't access learning and I'm in the business of learning. So that's why I really was eager to be on this committee to ensure that our, our learners feel safe. And um, one thing that you might not know about me is that I am very interested in throwing and catching a boomerang. And I have done that several times in my life and I'm still working on it. And I, I don't know why, but I find it really interesting. Great, thank you. And Jen. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, hi everyone. I'm Jen Wall Howard and um, she, her, and I am the assistant principal at Montpelier High School. I was asked to be on this committee um, because I've been at Montpelier High School for 27 years and um, to bring my uh, experience with um, all different, I guess, uh, waves of whatever happens in our society <laughs> from my perspective at school. Um, so, I am, I'm glad to be here though. I would like to hear other voices. We're pretty isolated at the school. You know, of course we see students all the time, but I don't get to see community that often. So I'm glad I'm, glad I'm gonna be part of this. Um, something you don't know about me. No, well, nobody really knows me here except maybe Ileana a little bit and Amanda, but um, I'm a drummer in a Kletzmer band. That's my, my secret world here. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. And Joan? Hi, everyone. I'm Joan Javier Duval, uh, she, her pronouns. Um, I've lived in Montpelier since 2014 with my spouse and our now almost seven year old, um, who is a first grader at Union Elementary School. Um, let's see. There are probably lots of things you all don't know about me. I know a couple of people, but mostly not any of you. Um, I grew up in Chicago and um, am a second generation Filipinx. Um, my parents both immigrated from the Philippines in the mid 70s, which is an important part of my life experience and identity. Um, I guess I wanted to be a part of this committee um, for a lot of different reasons, partly, you know, I've in my what you could say is a short time here in Montpelier, I feel like there have been a number of ways in which conversations about um, racial justice and inclusion and safety have come up. Um, and it just feels like a really important conversation um, and one um, that really calls on us to, to listen really closely and deeply to one another and to, um, especially those in our community who might not always be listened to. Um, and that feels like a conversation I really wanna be a part of. Thank you, Joan. And to, uh, Emma. Hi, my name is Emma Bay Hansen and um, my connection to the community is runs pretty deep, but I am currently a new member of the Montpelier Roxbury School Board. Um, I have been serving since about May, and um, but I'm also a parent. I have two kids in the district, one at Union School and one at Main Street Middle School, and I'm also an alum. So I graduated in 1995, and I think my math serves me correctly that maybe Jen was there when I was at Montpelier High School, but I don't know in what capacity. <laughs> Um, right. Yep. I was there. So, uh, something you might not know about me is, um, I have driven across the United States of America eight times. Um, 
and why does it matter uh, to me to be involved in this? Um, it just feels like, you know, first of all, my background is I'm a, I was a high school social studies teacher um, up until last year. And for me, being a lifelong learner and then also encouraging, um, you know, children in particular, teenagers, and I was very, very happy to see how many of our local students applied to be on the board. And um, I think it's really important for, for them and for the whole community to engage in the democratic process. And so I see this as a time, you know, there, there comes times in our culture and our history where we need to sort of step back and examine some of our systems. And I think this is one of those times. Um, it's important to amplify uh, voices and perspectives of marginalized people. And I think um, we can all agree that in the media these days, we've been seeing a lot um, happen with people of color in regards to police officers. So when I heard that um, you know, members of our local community were, were feeling some tension with the school resource officer, I felt like it was time for us as a community to examine our values around that role and um, listen to these voices. Thank you, Emma. And Catherine. Hi, I'm Catherine Nunnally. Uh, I have a first, a fourth, and an 11th grader in the Montpelier Roxbury schools. We've lived in Montpelier for five years. And um, gosh, it took me a long time to think of something. And this is not very exciting, but um, in college, I started out as a fashion merchandising um, major. <laughs> so I really enjoy design, uh, but I ended up as an English major which is really my first love of reading books and writing. Um, why this is important to me to be on this committee. Um, I've always thought of myself as an adult, as a edifier, somebody that builds people up and a, a, a connector, a bridge builder, or I've striven for that. I don't know if people think of that of me, but I think that's a really important thing for people to be. And um, it just seems like there is a lot of hostility, a lot of assumptions being made. Um, and I just wanna use this opportunity to unify and also to um, have people's voices listened to. And I wanna learn from that and really create a solution to the problem. Great, thanks, Catherine and Amanda. Hi everybody, um, my name is Amanda Payne. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am a school counselor at Montpelier High School. Um, I just started this job in September, like September 1st, so pretty new, although I was at the high school a couple of years ago in a part-time capacity. Um, I'm also a co-advisor for our school's GSA, our Gender and Sexuality Alliance. Um, something you don't know about me, Edie, when you said you love your dog so much, I was just like, oh my God, I was just telling my dog how much I love her. <laughs> um, super resonated with me. Um, and gosh, why am I doing this? I, I'm, uh, my job is to support all students and create a safe environment for everybody and create a culture of respect and inclusivity um, and I have a very strong passion for restorative justice. Um, I'm involved in restorative justice in a lot of ways and really thinking about how to create a restorative culture that, um, that really just brings everybody in um, and doesn't throw anybody out, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm really excited to hear um, from everybody on this committee and, and learn a little bit more. And um, yeah, that's about it. Great, thank you. And Eliana? Hi there, um, my name is Eliana Moorhead and I'm a senior at MHS. Um, hmm, something you might not know, I can do like 50 push-ups at once, so that's fun. Um, I want to be here because I'm like, I'm excited to reevaluate the relationships that we want to see and be a part of in our school and 
the spreading to the rest of the Montpelier community as well. And a few summers ago, I, d I did this project in New York City where we sort of like looked at alternatives to incarceration and that sort of, I've wanted to bring that to my school since then. And I think that this is the perfect time to do that. I mean, it always has been, but yeah. And sort of just like looking at the, the actions that, that people take and the stories and experiences that influence them. And so we can kind of hold it together instead of just making everything so boxy and strange. But yeah, that's... Thank, thank you, Eliana. We appreciate you being here. And, and we're gonna go to you next, Zach. Um, hi, my name is Zach, use he him pronouns. Um, I'm a sophomore at MHS, um, so that's that's my connection. Um, something you might not know about me, I have lived in five different states, um, some of those states multiple times, um, so I've moved around a lot. Um, yeah. And why I want to do this is, um, I think really what Edie mentioned, like uh, as a way of giving back to the community in ways that I can and ways that will res promote restorative justice along with calling people in instead of calling them out to create more of like a inclusive community, I think is very necessary in learning environment. Yeah. Great. Thanks so much, Zach. And Tony? Hi, I'm Tony Fakus. I uh, prefer, you know, he, him pronouns. And uh, I was uh, asked to, to be on uh, this committee to see it just to be as a resource, essentially, from uh, the city's perspective. I'm retired from the Montpelier Police Department. And I graduated from Montpelier High School in 1984, and my older sisters, we uh, also came up through the Montpelier school system, and I live in Montpelier, so I'm, uh, I just love, absolutely love what I've been hearing so far, inclusion, you know, restorative practice, all these things, and, and personally for me, uh, I'm just, anything that I can do to help um, bring this community together uh, more so, and, and almost, you know, tune out the, the, the national conversation, if you will, uh, because it doesn't reflect the values of Montpelier that I'm so proud of. And, and as far as anything unusual about me, um, well, I, uh, I have a real interest in underwater archaeology. I'm a dive master. And uh, so the preservation of our underwater cultural resources and history is important to me. So that's it. Thank you, Tony. And Pierre? Hello everyone, my name is Peter Cotton. Um, I'm the new guy on the block. Um, I'm the uh, assistant principal at Main Street Middle School, um, but I also have a lot of connection. Um, I actually um, received my master's at um, Union Institute and University with uh, Emma Bay Hansen. Um, and like spent a lot of time in Montpelier when I was a, a cadet at Norwich University. Um, something that's, I guess, interesting about me or people really probably don't know is that um, I think I live in two worlds. Um, I was raised in Virginia Beach, Virginia, um, with you know by my grandma. Um, lived in poverty in the hood and kind of worked my way out and went to college. And my goal in high school was to graduate just high school. And you know I never knew that I would be here now. So I uh, feel privileged to be on this committee. Um, but living in two worlds is you know I'm married to uh, a wonderful woman. Like I have a blended family, um, and I'm able to have really great conversations about. Um, and she's white, um, about race and, and equity and um, unity. Uh, I think the problem is we're not having conversations with each other um, and, and we're not really communicating. And not just you know, one side, I think every side. Um, one reason you know that I wanted to do, be on this committee is, is that um, I always tell the students and the faculty at my school that my job is to make sure that everyone feels and um, is safe physically and mentally. Uh, and, you know, since I've been an administrator, that's been my number one goal. So I, I think that this, you know, committee will definitely give us some answers to do that. So thank you for your time. Great. Thanks so much, Pierre. And Jay? Hi, friends. Um, my name is Jay Erickson. I'm comfortable with uh, he, him pronouns. Um, in my 
official capacity, I am the representative of the Montpelier City Council on this committee. Um, but I should feel like it's also worthwhile adding that I uh, worked with the school district in 2017 and 18 um, as the project manager for the new playground at UES um, and had a lot of interaction with the uh, SROs uh, throughout that process. Um, I'm also a father. I happen to have a uh, one boy at Union, one boy at MSMS, and one boy at the high school all at once this year. Um, so um, I think I, I bring a unique perspective to this to this process, but I'm excited to listen and learn to all of your perspectives as well. If there's one thing I would I would add is, or that you might not know about me is. Given the pandemic, my boy, I sure I miss Popcorn Friday. I miss being a part of being as a parent, being able to go and be a part of the school community, because that's what I love. I love so much about Montpelier schools that that we are such a community. Um, and I think that that informs my perspective as we start this process. Um, so I, I appreciate being here and I appreciate uh, all everybody else being a part of this process. Thanks. That's great. Thank you. I've made a note to myself another time we're going to find out what Popcorn Friday is. So I believe we've had everyone on the committee introduce themselves and I think you're all here except for Jim Murphy, who I know is going to be here a little bit later. Did I miss anyone on the committee? Okay, we have four guests and I'd like to also give them an opportunity to just very briefly, if you can, introduce yourselves. And I'll start with um, Amanda. <laughs> Hola everybody, my name is Amanda Garces. I am a Montpelier resident, a member of the Just, School, Just Schools Initiatives, and also a parent of an elementary school and a preschooler. I am uh, really happy to be here to see this work ahead. And I just, one thing that I wanna say is that this is not just a conversation about the national conversation. These things ha do happen here in, in Vermont. These, these things do happen here in Montpelier. We are not isolated. And I just wanna make sure that, that it's out there. If this is not some like image of what's happening out there is happening here and we need to do things for change. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. I really appreciate that because we are going to be talking about the things that we can can affect change on. And so, Julia, do you, would you like to do a quick introduction? Hi, I'm Julia Schaffitz. Um, I use she, they pronouns. I am a um, parent in the district. I have a first grader and I'm also a therapist um, in private practice. I'm a social worker um, and I work with a lot of teens, um, middle schoolers and teens. and so. Um, just to build on what Amanda said, uh, making sure that we t that we sort of realize the impacts not only of the things that do happen in our community as well as the the, the national conversation that does and the national um, it, it it impacts our ch our children in terms of the they're watching it and they're experiencing it and they're 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 um, experiencing the trauma of the national conversation as well um, as well as the incidents that do happen here. So um, here, sort of with my trauma-informed lens, um, listening. So thank Thanks, you. Julia. And Peter? Uh, can you unmute yourself, Peter? He's, there you go. Okay. Peter Kalman, uh, he, him. Um, I'm a lifelong uh, retired educator, taught um, at all levels from elementary through graduate school. And uh, in urban areas, rural areas, and suburban areas, and I just want to second what Amanda said, uh, said, these kinds of communications issues are in every state, in every town, throughout our society, because our, our country was founded on slavery. Thank you, Peter. And Jolinda? Hi. Hi. Sorry, I was in the dark, so I figured I'd shut my audio off, or video off. Um, hi, everyone. I'm just kind of listening, observing as long as I can. Um, 
Let's see, my connection is uh, I am a parent of two UES kids, first grader and preschooler. Um, I'm on the board of Partners in Education, the nonprofit of the caregiver groups, and just a resident of Montpelier and someone in love with the town and the community. And it's just a, it's everything that you all have said about why you want to be here really it all resonates i just want our schools to feel safe for everyone thanks thanks jolinda and kelly kelly are you with us would you like to introduce yourself okay we'll come back to her if she is that she'd like to introduce herself. So thank you for the introductions. I know that takes a little time, but tonight we're actually gonna go slow tonight so we can go fast later and just make some of those connections. I'm going to share the screen for just a moment. And uh, I just wanna share a little bit of information with you. Um, if I can kind of make up an announcement there, I, we really try to monitor the waiting room and make sure there's not a disruptive force that appears in the meeting. So we tend to look for people to have their names, etc. There's someone um, in the waiting room that name is identified as Dash. In parentheses, it says cartoonist. Maybe it meant to be cartoonist, but I don't know. Does that does that ring a bell to anybody? Because I asked that person to email me or change their name to get into the meeting. So I just wanted to check. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I think her son changed her Zoom name and it's a community member named Meredith Warner. So um, um, I'm I, well, I was also noticing a couple other additional uh, members of the public that are present that weren't called upon. So I don't know if we can take a, another minute, but there was, um, I think there's Chad and Caitlin. Thank you, Emma. I missed a few people. So Chad and Caitlin, if you want to do a quick introduction, that would be great. Sure, I'll do a quick one. Hi, my name is Chad. Uh, this is Ember. Uh, we moved to Montpelier a year ago, and uh, she is a kindergartner at UES. Uh, we're very interested in the conversation um, around community safety, school safety, how they all connect. Um, I was deeply involved in these conversations in Brattleboro where we lived for 14 years. So uh, very grateful that these conversations are happening and uh, uh, happy to participate in whatever way we can. Thanks. Great, thank you. And Meredith is now here. I am sorry, Meredith. I kind of asked if anybody knew a dash in the room so people have heard a little bit about you. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, kids. Oh, and we're just introducing ourselves as what interests us in, in being here tonight. Um, my name's Meredith Warner. Um, I live in Montpelier. I have kids. I'm interested in what's going on in the school district. So I thought I'd check it out. Thank you for having Thank me. You. And Emma, did, is there anyone else that we missed that you noticed, or are we good now? Um, there was, I, I was just, I'm taking notes, <laughs> so I was taking okay. notes of everybody who was present, and there was, um, Caitlin Brower Moore was present, but it looks like she left the meeting, so. Okay, okay. Well, if anyone else comes in, we'll have them introduce themselves. So we wanted to share just a little bit of information. Tonight, basically, after we do this introductory stuff, we're going to break into two groups and just have a chance to sh give you a chance to share some of your stories and experiences and then we'll talk about next steps. Before we dive into those conversations, Keisha and I just wanted to share with you, uh, we did introductions, some of the guiding principles that we felt were really important when the, um, the school district approached us about potentially helping with this work. We felt that in order for your committee that has some really important work to do to be successful, here are a few principles that we felt were important. Of course, we feel it's that students have to be a central focus throughout the work, that it's important to prioritize people who come from the most impacted communities around the issues that are being discussed. We thought it would be good to have a well-rounded group of folks with both formal and informal decision-making power. 
it's essential um, for this kind of work to have time to build relationships and trust so that when you get to the places where you might not all agree on solutions, you have a foundation to fall back on. It's important to establish and honor group agreements to guide the work and that the identification of shared values is a really important step to inform your recommendations. Again, if we can find some values that you hold together, that will help you if you're having disagreements about strategies. And then finally, we think it's very important for you to have opportunities to look at uh, data and research so that um, our conversations can be informed by that. And Having said that, we're going to go to the next slide, which is just giving us a chance to establish some group agreements. And these are things that the group will fall back on, uh, norms, uh, ways that you all wanna interact to be successful. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get out of here so that I can actually add to this. And I just wanna invite people in the group if you have suggestions for how you wanna conduct yourselves as a group to help people feel like they can have a frank and productive conversation, say what they need to uh, and do the work that you're here to do together. So I'm going to pause and allow you all to suggest some and I will write them down. Sue, while well, people are thinking maybe Jim and Beth could introduce themselves who just came in. Hi, Jim. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi, all. Um, I'm going to go out off camera for a, a bit again. Um, yeah, I'm Jim Murphy. I'm chair of the board. Um, as I was late, I had to actually teach teach a class till just now. Um, uh, and yeah, no, um, sorry, I missed the beginning and um, very glad to be here. Uh, but I'm one of the three three board members on the committee. Great, great. And Beth? Hi, um, I'm Shabnam Beth Nolan. I am um, a parent at Union Elementary, the three kids in our school system, two at the elementary school, one coming in eventually. Uh, and I use she, her pronouns. And um, I also am a person who identifies as a woman of color, Middle Eastern. Um, and I'm not sure what else you, you were hoping for for introductions, but I am glad that this conversation is happening. I've also been involved with the Just Schools Initiative here in Montpelier. Thank you. We're happy that you're here. And so first names do you prefer Shabnam or uh or Beth that's a great question depends on the audience I'm happy with either okay if you want to just write in the your preferred name for tonight's meeting then we'll we'll honor that so thank you so somebody just texted in the chat that um one of the group agreements they would like to suggest is listen for understanding so I've added that other suggestions I would say, speak your truth respectfully. No, no, okay. Okay. So Mara's asking, who speaks first? Whenever possible, let the first voice in response to a question be from a person historically marginalized in our, in our culture. I'm going to try to copy this and, and uh, put this in. Keisha, maybe you can check the chat and read the, those suggestions for me. Okay, I didn't even see anything so, coming. But. They might be chatting to, oh, is okay. your, it's, they're chatting to the host. So, um, so I'm going to just shorten this a little bit and take the context, but keep the idea. Okay, other ideas? I would say both step up and step back. I mean, participate, but also make sure that you give lots of room for other people to be heard and to participate as well. Okay. I've definitely heard that without the kind of physical ability language included as take space and make space as well. 
and I thought that um, Shabnam also mentioned the ableist language. So just thank, thank you. you. And I also, I am going to suggest one that all ideas get a fair hearing. Anything else? I like, go I like, ahead. Um, I like assume best intentions. I, I often frame that as uh, honor intentions and attend to impact just so that we're holding both the intention and the impact. Uh, I see a chat, so I can be helpful there. Um, mm, well, someone wrote this to me privately, so I won't name them, but it was a great suggestion. They wanted to clarify, uh, listen for understanding as listen to understand, not to respond. Um, someone also chatted, avoid jargon. Love it. That's a very helpful one. I, it, it's hard to say, you know, it's hard to say confidentiality when we know like Orca's filming and stuff, but we will have small group breakouts and Orca, I hope you're, you're aware we're not having Orca like sort of go into a small group breakout. So, um, if that's cool, then those stories, we're asking people to break out in small groups where you can share more intimately and that then hopefully would be confidential if you have a takeaway to share to the larger group. Um, either get permission from the person or, you know, make it really general about your reflection of something that's not identifying to that person's story. I did can I, I just, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, these are public meetings subject to open meeting law and there's only certain things that can technically be occur in confidence so um while we i think we'll be careful about what we say technically everything needs to be in the open um to be in compliance with the law so yeah, just jim be aware of that is that jim <laughs> yes yeah. you well, have to work it into one group or how does that i, I think I mean, in, it, i've like, been um, I've been facilitating meetings with in other districts with public access and they have not gone into the breakout groups and those conversations have not been decision making conversations but conversations to help people share stories and so we're hoping that that works okay jim does that sound like that could work to, for you yeah no it, it definitely does i mean orca does not need to be there but we we can't um i don't think we can exclude people from those conversations who want to be there and um you know if if someone really wants to know what occurred in those conversations, I, it's not it's not protected. Right. And we and just to clarify, we are going to invite everybody who's on this call to be in the breakout room. So group so the people on the committee and our guests are all going to be able to be part of those conversations. I did want to clarify just because it was not at the beginning, and I, I think most people on the call understand that these meetings are going to be recorded by Orca Media, which is a local public broadcast station, and so we don't know how it will, how and where it will be used right now. So it could be posted on YouTube um, as their local channel is is typically done. Like all of the school board meetings are posted to their the Orca YouTube channel. And then it also might be posted publicly on Facebook or Instagram or the school district website. So everyone should just enter every meeting with that understanding that everything that is being said and divulged and the things you don't know about me are all part of the public meeting. Okay. Um, thank you. So we will right now not put Orca in a small breakout group. Anyone who's here from the public is welcome to go into those breakout groups. If Orca, if you have a problem with that, whoever is filming, you can write to me privately in the chat and we can discuss or you can say what you need to say. Um, I also just want to keep track of the chat and someone had also uh, written stay present. So kind of try to limit device and uh, use and multitasking. Um, someone also asked a great question about how we will make decisions. Um, 
and I think we can wait until the next meeting. That's a great topic that has a lot of other sub agreements, I think, involved. So um, let's wait on that for next meeting. It's a great question. Um, and uh, someone is asking about having to jump off and getting the meeting recording. So Orca will be present for the whole time. They just won't be in a breakout group. So um, I think you will be able to see much of the rest of the meeting besides the breakout groups uh, from the recording. So what I'd like to suggest uh, in the interest of time is that we uh, start with these agreements and we can revisit these next time. We can add to them. And I've also just put them into the chat box so you can refer to them. And again, the purpose of these is to try to help us have the most frank and productive conversations that we can. So if everyone's okay, could I get a thumbs up from people if you're okay with the agreements that we just came up with together? Okay, I'm doing a quick scan. I think people look like they're, they're, those agreements are going to work. So thank you for that. So now we're going to break into two groups and we're going to have about um, 20 minutes in these small groups to share some of our stories and go a little bit deeper and then we'll all come back together. And so I'm going to, I'm just looking here to see. So I'll be in the first group and, and Keisha will be in the second group. I'm going to open these rooms and we'll come back together in about 20 minutes. Can I just say the questions for everyone? Oh, been... sure. I also had those uh, in the presentation too. Keisha, if you want me to share that for just um, quickly. Sure, I'll put them in the chat too, so everyone has them before they go. Um, and we'll say them out loud, I think, you know, as well, the video screen will show on Orca, but the small groups are discussing what experiences bring you a sense of safety and belonging? Uh, what experiences make you feel unsafe? What are your experiences with local police? And how have current, and I, I, um, I didn't quite sort of catch this framing, Sue, when we were going over the agenda, but I, I take in experiences with growing up in LA with the LAPD into my life with local police. So, you know, I just wanna know it doesn't have to be local police that you are referring to. What experiences with the police do you have? Because for many people of color and marginalized folks, they take all their experiences with the police at, with them everywhere they go. Um, and how have current events impacted your sense of safety? How have issues of bias, racism, and bullying impacted your sense of safety? Um, again, you are, if you are a member of the public, we invite you to participate as fully as members of the committee um, because your experiences are really relevant to the work that they're going to be doing. Great. Thank you, Keisha. And so if you are able, Keisha, to put those in the chat also, there they are, wonderful. Okay, so now with that, we will go into our rooms. Thank you.